Hello and welcome to the studio. A short while ago, one of my more safety conscious friends mentioned how he wanted to attach a seatbelt cutter to his race car so he could cut himself out in the event that he became trapped and unable to release the seatbelts. Now, while these types of failures are a rare occurrence in modern day racing, that did get me thinking. How well would a consumer grade seatbelt cutter work in a situation like this? And frankly, how well do these things work in general? So I acquired two of the more popular handheld seatbelt cutters out there to see how well they do in cutting various types of automotive belts and straps. On the left here is a Vixing brand window breaker seatbelt cutter keychain. This is available on Amazon for about 17 US dollars for a pack of two and is apparently Amazon's choice for the term 3-in-1 car life keychain, whatever that means. And on the right is a Rescue Me seatbelt cutter. These go for about 19 US dollars for a pack of two, and these also happen to be Amazon's choice, but for the different search term glass breaker seatbelt cutters. Now, both tools look pretty similar and they work in the same way. The idea is that if you were trapped by your seatbelt, you would Yank the tool off your keychain to expose the sharp metal blade that's hidden inside the body here. Then you would grasp the tool like this, slip the seatbelt into the slot here, and pull the tool towards you to slice the seatbelt and free yourself or your passengers. Both of these tools also have a spring-loaded glass breaker that you can use to break the tempered glass of your car's side windows. And while I won't be testing these on camera today, I will mention that I have tested both of these tools in the garage and I'm pretty confident that they will have no problems shattering a sheet of tempered glass. Now down here I have three types of felts to test these on. So on the left here is some standard polyester seatbelt material, similar to what you find in any modern passenger car or child safety slit. In the middle here are the shoulder belts from a GeForce Pro Series Camlock racing harness. These have a SFI 16.1 rating that makes it legal for use in racing events here in the United States. And as you can see, it's considerably wider and thicker than a standard car seat belt. These racing harnesses are made out of a proprietary blend of material that GeForce calls Polytech, a strong and fire resistant polyester based weave. And on the right here is a section of nylon tie-down strap. It's like the kind that you'd use when tying a car down to a trailer or when fastening a heavy load to the roof rack of your car or truck. This particular strap is rated to a working load limit of 3,300 pounds or about 1,500 kilograms and it has a brake strength of over 10,000 pounds or 4,500 kilograms. And while it is a little dirty, it is still in very good condition. Now in order to get an accurate representation of what kind of tension these belts would be under, I'm going to clamp one end down to the workbench using these ratchet clamps, then I'm going to be holding the other end of the belt in my hand here. So with all that said and done, let's attach the standard car seat belt to the bench and test out our two seat belt cutters. Alright, and we have our standard car seat belt firmly fastened to our workbench with this clamp, and we're going to start with the Vixing seatbelt cutter tool. So I'm just going to take off the keychain, hold it like this, being careful not to put my thumb over the windshield breaker here, as I'm not currently in need of a puncture wound in my thumb. I'm just going to hold it like this. Now I am told that I should cut diagonally across the weave to have the best chance of, of getting through this belt. So we're going to try that technique, and here we go. Okay, do seem to be having a little bit of trouble getting through this belt here. Just adjust my grip. No, that doesn't seem to be doing it. It seems to be getting through this first little bit of material, but then it just gets jammed up in the body here. Let's see if we have better luck with the rescue me. Once again, we're just going to avoid the uh, windshield breaker here. 
and we'll go down to a fresh bit of belt right down here. And here we go. Oh, okay, that's much more like it. Let's try that again, just to show that it wasn't a fluke. Just like that. I'm just gonna hold the outside of my fingers this time, because that felt all too easy. Hmm, there we have it. That actually didn't require much pressure at all. Okay. Well, let's try the racing seat belt next to see if my friend's theory has any merit. All right. Now we have the uh, G-Force racing harness in our little vent vise here. And once again, we are going to try cutting this with the Vixing seatbelt cutter. Here we go. And once again, we seem to be having a bit of trouble getting through the belt. You can see where the blade is contacting the edge of the belt. It just seems to get jammed up right after that. Hmm. Okay. Let's try the rescue me tool. Now, these racing harnesses are at least two millimeters thick. I would be surprised if this can get through this type of belt, but let's see. Oh, well, um, color me surprised. Let's do that again, just to make sure that wasn't a fluke. Wow, that is actually quite impressive. These racing belts are designed to hold about 10 times the force of a standard car seat belt. And yet, this tool seems to make pretty good work of it. Okay, we now have our nylon toe strap attached to our workbench here. This is the strongest strap of all the ones that we've tested today. Once again, starting with the Vixing tool. Let's see if it can get through this strap. And once again, the Vixing has trouble getting through the strap. It looks like it has just enough cutting power to get through the edge of the edge of the belt here, but just can't get all the way through. Okay, and then let's try the rescue me. Well, uh, no surprises there, I suppose. And we'll just do this one more time. I'm actually going to cut straight across this time, just to see if it can manage to get through, and that seems to be no problem at all. Okay, that is very impressive. And there we have it. It turns out that my friend's crazy idea isn't so crazy after all. Turns out that this Rescue Me seatbelt cutter works, even on something as thick as these racing harnesses or this heavy-duty toe strap which I'm really surprised about. It's really impressive considering how much thicker and how much stronger these are compared to the relatively flimsy standard car seat belt. Now, as for why the Vixing tool didn't work as advertised, I suspect it's due to this blade being set too far into this plastic housing here. Here's the Rescue Me just for comparison. You can see how much further this blade sticks out of the plastic body. What I suspect is happening is the blade is snagging on that little outcropping there, and it's preventing it from getting all the way through. And frankly, it's really preventing it from doing its job. Whether this is a manufacturing defect or design flaw, it's hard to say. But after seeing this, I probably won't be recommending this Vixing seatbelt cutter to any of my friends and family. In any case, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you at the track.